Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I wanted to walk you through um, how I do my quarterly planning. I think I might have done this before, but it's been a while, some things have changed, so I just wanted to walk you through what it looks like for me now. So anyway, let's jump into this. So uh, if you've been on my Instagram page, you'll notice I'm in a different planner than usual. I am going to do a full walkthrough um, when I do, I just noticed it's out of focus. I am gonna do a full walkthrough um, in my October planner update. So you should probably have that a couple weeks after this comes out. So I'm not gonna go through everything. Be, be assured that is coming. So this is my review section. Um, I've mentioned previously, but in case you haven't seen any of my videos before, I do have my reference routine, my reference inserts available in my store. They're not as filled out as all of this, um, but the annual quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily review sections do look a lot like this. So if you're interested in those, the link to my Etsy store is down below. All right, so first things first on my quarterly review is to make a list of what has my attention. So I believe that's back here in section and I may have actually already transferred it, but this was the list of things that was on my brain when I was thinking about my quarter and what all I wanted to do. So as you can see, I have drawn a line through some of these. That actually just means that I have moved it to the master to-do list. Um, this tab is for work, this tab is for home, and projects are behind. And again, I'll do a full walkthrough um, when I film my October planner update. But it was just kind of notes to myself, areas I wanted to focus on decluttering, the fact that my email is starting to get out of control again and I wanna start really focusing in on getting my email down to zero fairly often. And just some other stuff and a note to myself, I've been pre-planning my quarters when I do my momentum planner and I wanna stop doing that because I'm kind of boxing myself in, especially since I write all of that in pen. And if I get further ahead than I expect or don't get as far ahead because I focused on something else, I wanna give myself the flexibility. So that was my note to self. So that was kind of my update. I try and keep my to-do list fairly updated. So usually I don't have too much. I just kind of review what all I have and then draw a line through anything that just doesn't really apply anymore that I've already finished. Along with that, I have looked for tasks and projects that have been continually migrated forward in the last quarter, evaluate whether they are still relevant. I do keep those migrated up, and usually at the end of the week, I'm already doing that review. If it's something I don't think I'll get done the next day or two, then I actually move that back to the master to-do list. Review calendar for the following quarter and look for big events that need to be planned or prepped for. So I did separate out my monthly from my daily pages. So my daily pages are in the next tab back, which kind of keeps all my months together. I was trying to keep everything somewhat set up how I had it set up in my traveler's notebook. So that's why I changed how that was working. So I have gone through and updated all of my months. And actually, <laughs> I just got the calendar for next year for the SoCal RHA, the Rental Housing Association. So I have filled in everything literally through December of next year, which is really scary that I have stuff on my calendar through the end of next year, but I do. So that I went ahead and took care of as well. Um, as well as reviewing the calendar and getting everything updated, it also talks about looking for big events that need to be planned or prepped for. So for me, that's things like going on my next trip to Texas, which will happen at the beginning of October. It has to do with um, the fact that I have a gala I'm supposed to go to on Saturday that I need to figure out what I'm going to wear. <laughs> um, today is currently Wednesday the 25th. You guys will actually probably see it that day. I'll probably schedule it for then. Um, as far as next month goes, as you can see, it's pretty busy. I have quite a bit of stuff going on. Um, and so just making sure I have everything kind of planned out for all of that stuff and that there isn't anything I need to do to kind of get myself ready. Um, the next thing is review annual goals and break down into quarterly goals. So I do kind of have this in two places. 
Um, let me show you originally where it is residing. So this will actually apply for the next couple. Let me see if I can, oh, you're gonna see the edge of the tripod, but that's okay. So it's not quite big enough. We'll see what we can get done here. So you've heard me mention the Momentum Planner. If you have been watching any of my videos. So this is what I have printed out. I've printed it at 84% so it fits in my classic sized happy planner. So this is the yearly momentum planner and I have kind of my yearly goals. Those are also in here. And so this is kind of where I start. So what I ended up doing, so right now we're still at the tail end of September. So I still have these goals. Um, some of them I actually got postponed. Some things like this actually, someone else is taking care of it so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Whoops. And yeah, I mean, I'm making progress on a lot of these things. So I did my September review and kind of figured out um, and then the next thing they have you do quarterly in the power sheets is go through the fall section. So each quarter you go through, kind of think about what you want the next quarter to look like. And actually here, let me move this. <laughs> I have too much stuff sitting on the table here. So it has you think through what you want the next month to look like, and then you kind of revamp your goals for the following month. So I have, kind of what I want to savor this season, and I'll probably still add some extra things. Um, I evaluated kind of where I feel I am on all of this. My word for the next three months is preparation. And then I did a goal refresh. So pretty much everything has stayed the same. I, let me go back to summer, which is here. In the summer, you'll notice I have seven goals. Here I have eight. So I had taken out my Cambridge goal over the summer and because I really felt like I wasn't making any progress on it and then things kind of kicked into gear and it kind of came back into play. So originally, if we go back to, I think spring, do I still have it in there? I do, but it's blank. <laughs> all right, let's go all the way back to the beginning because at work things have kind of changed and I didn't know what this year was going to look like. So my original goal was to update current policies and procedures and then any of the supporting documents. So be manuals, forms, workflows, that sort of thing. And then also I was in charge of revamping our lease renewal, so the workflow and the timeline on that. So I actually did get the lease renewals done and revamped and I need to finish the workflow as a part of the other part of this but I did put back in the updating the current policies, procedures, and supporting documents because I'll be working through that in the next few months. Other than that, that iffy goal that's kind of appeared and disappeared throughout the year, everything else has actually stayed the same. Um, actually, I lied. Uh, my volunteer goal has changed. What it was before was actually fairly nondescript because I volunteer for a lot of different things. There's church, there's the um, local rental housing association, the state one, the national one. Um, I feel like I'm doing other things as well, but those are kind of the big ones. So my general goal was to fulfill volunteer obligations and provide my expertise to help improve the organization that I'm working with, whatever that might be. I've actually narrowed it down because in the last couple of months, I guess it's been now, um, my the timeline for me being president of the local rental housing association has been bumped up a year. I think I might've mentioned that already. So I kind of revamped that goal for the end of the year to prepare to become the board president, including reading up on best practices, meeting with one or two past presidents and meeting with the association executive. Basically, because I only have known that I'm going to be president next year for two months now, so maybe the last quarter of the year, I'm playing catch up. Most presidents kind of have an entire year to get prepared and everything, so I'm cramming all of that into a quarter. <laughs> so obviously, if I commit to something, 
Um, I want to do it to my best ability, so I want to try and make sure I'm prepared to do the best job that I can. So that's one of the goals that has changed as is my work goal. So I went through all of the August, uh, August, the October preparation work and ended up with this tending list. So I found this online for my encouraging words and it was kind of long, so it got kind of small, but it says, I take time in autumn to reflect on my life and where I am going in it. I have a clear vision of the changes that I need to make so that I may continue to grow in my highest good. With grace, I let go of anything that is no longer serving me positively and I make way for many new blessings. So I found that online, it was a kind of an autumn related affirmation and I really, I really liked that and it kind of reflected what my mindset was right now. So my monthly action goals are to add new content for this channel in my Etsy store, to review and update at least four manuals and workflows. I'm hoping to get like maybe one a week, um, although I might get a few more of them when I'm in Texas because I have less distractions, we'll see. But that allows me some time for um, the weeks when I'm in town when I have lots of distractions and I don't get as much done. So I want to read two books, uh, which I already have set aside, and four articles to prep for my presidency. I still want to work on decluttering, which you saw that list earlier um, when I had made this list here. I have a sewing desk, a filming desk, which is why I'm in the living room, that is piled high with crap. And then uh, what I call my morning desk, which is where I do my morning devotions and Bible readings and stuff. Um, and then finally, I want to make a holiday prep list and start working on items because I'm going to be in and out of town so much. We are having company come in and with November and Thanksgiving and travels and stuff, I'm actually um, not going to have a lot of time to do prep work in November. So I want to start on that now. And let's be honest, this year's probably going to be really simple because it's just going to be me for most of the season. Um, as far as weekly action items, I want to try and post a video weekly. I want to declutter something weekly, whether that's something here at the house, whether it's something electronic. Um, I just want to kind of start simplifying my life and then making sure I'm doing grocery shopping and meal prep every single week. As far as my daily actions go, daily quiet time and prayer. Um, maybe not necessarily daily exercise, but I at least want to track how much I'm doing exercise. Uh, following the AAY meal plan, which I've mentioned before. Um, it's the one that has kind of the Trader Joe's. I'll actually link it down below because they're getting ready to start a new um, fall season. So you might be able to jump in on it. Um, but so I want to continue following that because it's actually been really good. I've lost a little bit of weight on that. And then making sure I'm doing a home care task daily. So whether that's something simple or um, something large, I want to at least try and get in the habit of doing something daily. So that's what my October kind of like um, monthly goals look like. So I have that that I worked on. Actually, I'm just going to pull the paper out of this. So this is the, the quarterly pages that I'm usually working on here. Now I have shrunk these down in my planner and I've had a couple people ask me about these. I probably will list them because it's kind of a modification of how I use the, um, nope, that's not it. The momentum planner, just the pieces I use because I don't use all of them. So this is kind of what it's looking like. On theirs, they, he only gives you, on the actual momentum planner, it only gives you room for five goals. And the power sheets gives you room for 10. So I'm trying to kind of combine the two of them together. So I have a portable version of both of these things combined. So I have an annual overview. Which actually, let me show you the page that's kind of tied into that. I'll, when I get these finalized, I'll actually go through and do a better in depth. So I kind of have the yearly goals, the major events, um, and then the quarterly objectives over on this side. So I took this page and basically put it like this. So this is what the fourth quarter looks like. 
and somehow I got my pages mixed up. <laughs> there we go. All right. So this is what quarter four looks like. So I have my annual goals, which are the same things that you saw on the power sheets. My quarterly objectives, which you also saw, uh, actually you may not have seen those on the power sheets, but this is, that's kind of what I want to focus on for the, the quarter. Basically prepping for holiday company and the holidays, adding content to my channel and Etsy store, prepping to be president, decluttering my house, and then my work goal of updating the policies and procedures. I have my major events and then my October monthly objectives. I've narrowed it down to five, which matches what's in the power sheets. So I'm trying to keep the two of them coordinated. So I'm doing a lot of my thinking and planning and things in here. And then I'm taking that information and adding it into my planner. So I have kind of an on the go version because I'm really bad about hunting that down and looking for power sheets and kind of updating what I'm doing um, when I'm updating the tending list and things like that. So this way I have a version. I don't have to carry the power sheets with me. So that was reviewing my annual goals and breaking them down into quarterly goals, which is here. And then I kind of rolled into monthly review, which translated putting those quarterly goals into monthly goals and projects. So the next thing is to review and create an editorial calendar for the next quarter. So I did do that. Enter back in the happy planner because that's how I'm using this is mostly as my editorial calendar, but also as my um, kind of home planner as well. So we are in this week here. So I have a quarterly plan with me. When I got back to California, I found my Erin Condren sticky notes. So now I can use those for planning. So for those people who were, had heard me mention about doing a um, collab with Antonisha, she ended up having to move sooner than expected. So we have postponed that. Um, I actually have a potential like placeholder date in here. It may move around. Um, I wanted to give her plenty of time to get settled. So we'll make a formal announcement or whatever. Um, or maybe it'll just show up and we'll tell you, hey, look, it's available. Um, but that will be coming at a later date. So if you don't think you've missed it, you haven't. We just had to postpone it. So I have my Saturday videos that I would like to film. I have my, oh, look, this thing's stuck on here. <laughs> that was why I switched away from the happy planner sticky notes for whatever reason it was like they had gotten hot or something and so the sticky transferred to the top of the sticky notes too so they keep sticking to things they're not supposed to um, I have my November videos I will probably not post anything around Thanksgiving or if I do um, I'll figure that out later and then I have December I don't think oh I do have a few things into January too so I've started brainstorming. They're on post-it notes so I can move them around depending on what I get around to filming or feel like filming, that sort of thing. Unless I decide to move things around, we shall see. All right. So then after that, I have review daily and weekly routines and update if needed. So this is something you had a little peek at earlier when I was trying to figure out what it was. So I have these work routines in place and I kind of feel like they're not serving me and what I'm wanting to do. So I'm kind of playing with adjusting them and um, finding a different way to have you know have this work so right now I have kind of moved things around but usually the first thing I do is I check my paper inbox I have something that's kind of outside of my office for people to put paper in but I'm guilty of as soon as I get in my office stuff gets set down and my desk just kind of explodes so I want to make sure that I'm thinking about it and kind of putting everything down on my desk and putting stuff away that I don't need right then so I'm not distracted by it. So putting my bags down, getting my planner out, 
checking my paper inbox, getting it processed, whether it's something I need to worry about now or whether it can be put off, and then just scanning my email for situational awareness. Usually I can tell by looking at the subject line whether it's important or not, and maybe deleting the stuff that's obviously trash, and then doing my most important things, and about two hours later to go back and then fully process my email, and then get away from my desk and take a break. So that's kind of what I'm hoping the first bit of time in the office will look like for me. So we'll see how that works. Um, I think it's more representative of kind of like what this was looking like and I have not figured out kind of at the end of the day. So that's the routine that I'm kind of looking at changing for work. Home still kind of applies. I don't really think there's too much to change on there. So that's pretty much what my quarterly review looks like. And my planner is so stuffed, things are falling out of it at the moment. So as, as you can see, I kind of have like three things working together. I mean, I have my planner, my checklist, I have the power sheets that I'm using, which is where I kind of keep track of my bigger goals and um, think through how I'm doing, what things need to be updated, and then I'm transferring that to my planner and or into this, which is kind of where the bigger version of the Momentum Planner lives. And from there, I'm kind of parceling things out. Now I am in the process of reading a book, which let me grab, because I just got it. And it's this book here. So Charlie Gilkey is the, there's stuff on it already. Um, he is the person who has created the power sheets and I'm working through this. I actually have an idea of something I'd like to work on what he calls best work. And it's kind of one of those things where I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, but I figured that will be my project that I'm gonna kind of use this idea and um, like mentality, I guess, to work through and see if something can come of it. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool. I'll tell you about it at a later time, I think when it gets a little further along, but it's something I'm kind of excited about doing. So we shall see. <laughs> but I did want to share this. This is actually a really good book. And he does have a ton of free resources. Um, his website's productiveflourishing.com. They do monthly webinars that are free. You just sign up to participate. And they do live Q and A's. So if you have a particularly sticky problem, he'll help you work through it. Um, it's amazing the things that they offer for free. So definitely highly recommend um, checking out his website, reading the articles that he has out there, and if you're so inclined to get the book, because what I have read so far has been really, really good. I think I'm on chapter four, and I've only had it a day, and today was crazy. I had three meetings, so <laughs> I was home not that much. Um, anyway, hopefully that was helpful, kind of a walkthrough of how I do my quarterly planning. I know I had some people that usually request that I actually do the review with you. Unfortunately, with the timing of how things were working this month, that wasn't very possible. I actually needed to get the quarterly review done so that I could be prepared for the next month, um, given kind of what my weekend looks like. And I didn't know when I would get around to filming. So I needed to get some stuff prepared and ready to go. Um, Cause if you look at Saturday, Saturday is gonna be a little crazy. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear if you do anything additional uh, for your quarterly review when you're trying to kind of get yourself wrapped around what the next three months are going to look like. One thing to keep in mind, I know I've mentioned it in a past video, but I think it bears repeating. If you're looking at the next few months, the next three months, the next quarter, keep in mind that really and truly two to three of the weeks in the next quarter are not like work weeks. You have the week of Thanksgiving, you have the week of Christmas and then also it kind of spills over into New Year's. So if you're trying to give yourself time and figure out how long you have to work on something, keep in mind you're actually losing three weeks. You actually have about nine weeks to work with in the next quarter instead of 12. So bear that in mind, you'll probably be a lot less frustrated. 
I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I have, oh, well, you've seen my editorial calendar. You kind of know what sorts of videos are coming up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.